And what I'm wondering is, uh, gosh, there's so many things to know. Like a lot of people say that you're really, you know, fun and positive and everything. And I'm just wondering, you know, have you always been like that or? I have been, honestly, I feel like I've, I've been the same ever since I was super young. Well, I mean, obviously I've matured, (laughs) uh, but personality wise, I've always been super outgoing, uh, positive, upbeat. Uh, that's just, that's how I have been since I was a little girl. (laughs) And then how did you, um, get into radio? So I originally, when I graduated high school, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Uh, I thought that I was going to be a teacher. Uh, That's what I thought I was going to be. But then I kept changing my mind because everyone's like, oh, you are totally a teacher. Like, I can't picture you doing anything else. So I was kind of listening to like what other people were telling me. They're like, okay. I'm like, they say I should be a teacher. Maybe I should just be a teacher, but that's not really what I wanted to do. So I went to Harper College for two years. It's a community college out in Palatine, Illinois. And um, I did my gen gen eds to get everything done and, you know, figure out what I wanted to do. And then at one point I thought maybe I'll go into sports management. So because I played, I was a college athlete. I played softball. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up interning for the Chicago Bandits. They were a professional softball team in Rosemont. And then one day I got to work. Uh, the championship series and it was they had ESPN there so I got to go into the broadcasting truck and I'm like oh that would be so fun to do broadcasting so then fast forward a year my mom and I were watching the CMAs and I'm like mom it would be so cool to be on the radio like it was just random and then I emailed I went on LinkedIn and I reached out to the people that are all at US 99 in the city and they're hiring for promotions. And uh, a few months later, I started that summer because I was still in school. And then I got the job and I started in promotions and I absolutely loved it. Loved working the events. Uh, they were tons of fun. And then I shadowed the morning show. I would go in and I connected with the on-air personalities. And I'm like, gosh, this is exactly what I want to do. This is what I've been looking for. It just, it never came across my mind. And that's where it all started was uh, Odyssey, which US 99 and 104.3 jams. That was back in 2019. Okay. And yeah, because I work at Odyssey. So maybe I saw you around. I don't know, because I was there at that time. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, yeah, I worked there in the summer. It was like June of 2019 to March of 2020 when COVID happened. So Mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. What was, so what was it like to work there though? Because those are major stations. That's a major company. I absolutely loved it. I, I loved it. I love the people I work with. They're phenomenal. There was, there was like a few promotions people. We would go into the office, you know, do the promotions work, but then we also did a lot of events on weekends, which was super fun because a lot of them were live broadcast. So I got to connect with some of the on-air personalities and ask them for advice and, they guided me, honestly, if it weren't for Odyssey hiring me, like, I really don't know it where, like, what career path I would have chosen, you know, like, it just, it happened, and I loved it, and the minute I walked in, I'm like, I absolutely love this, this is what I want to do, so thankfully for Odyssey, they gave me that uh, promotions job, and it led me to my career. Well, specifically, can you just explain what you love about radio, because a lot of people, I don't know how old you are. I'm assuming you're not 30 yet, but I'm 24. Okay. So I'm a, a lot of people say that younger people, quote unquote, younger people are not necessarily into radio. So why are you so passionate about radio? That's a good question. I, I love talking. <laughs> I love talking. I love creating content, uh, coming up with content, interacting with listeners. I love music. I absolutely love music, concerts, everything about it. So when I first thought of radio, I was talking to my mom and my parents always told me, you know, you should do something where you can use your personality and something where you're talking and blah, blah, blah. And then I finally came, I was like, radio it is. And I I really, I really do love interacting with the listeners. That's like the biggest part, especially at events. 
uh, but also the music interviewing artists and it's it's people that don't work in radio like it's it's so hard to explain like my love for it because I it, it's a part of me like I, I couldn't imagine not doing this it's what I do from like 4 a.m to like seven o'clock at night <laughs> and did you ever consider tv uh people have asked me that I don't I don't think I would want to do tv um it's just I love I love the I love radio and it's I I I've known some people that have done TV and it can be intense. You know, I, I just, I love the radio part. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the good thing about radio is that it's immediate, it's personal mm-hmm. and it's also, you know, it is just based on your voice unless you're doing an appearance or unless you're doing a live stream or something or video, but um, what kind of music do you like? I love, so I currently work at a hot AC station, but I love um, like pop country alternative rock like rap r&b hip-hop you name it i'm all over the board i i you know i worked at us 99 country jams uh which is throwback station now i'm at hot, hot ac uh i was a promotions coordinator at uh like q101 947 wls so i'm i love all kinds of music and when you were growing up did you listen to radio i did I did. I grew up listening to a lot of uh, B96, The Mix, Kiss, uh, you know, the ones that I, I grew up out here in Chicago. So I live right out like the Northwest suburbs. And do you, when you were growing up, did other people listen to radio too? Did your friends listen to it? You know what? They did. And I think about when, you know, I would be, my parents in the neighborhood, they would carpool. And I think about when you would get into your friend's parents' car, always listening to the radio. Like when my friend, my neighbor would pick me up to go to high school, we were listening to the radio, you know, and now it's different because I'm 24 and a lot of people, you know, my age don't typically listen to radio anymore. Uh, But I mean, I'm trying, I'm getting my friends into it and they love it. But everyone's so used to the streaming, the, you know, podcasting is huge now, Uh, Spotify, Apple Music. But what I tell people is the thing with like Spotify, listening to music off Spotify or um, Apple Music, you're not getting that interaction with, you know, that personality where I want my listener to feel like as if I'm their friend when they're pick dropping their kid off at school. Like I want them to feel like, you know, I'm right there with them. Whereas if you're listening to Apple music and you're just listening to the music, you're not going to have that connection, you know? But do you think people care? Like when I was growing up, we did care. And even when I was older, I cared. Um, But do you think that other people do care about connecting with somebody? You know what? That's a great question. I ask a lot of great questions. Yeah, <laughs> you, do. you do. I said, you really do. I'm just wondering if it's like a habit that, you know, people have developed. What do you think? Honestly, it's music gets released and it become it's trending and it's hitting the charts. Honestly, you know, because of radio, someone will be like, oh, I heard this on the radio. But a lot of my friends also get their music from spotify or apple music and they'll listen like when we were giving taylor swift tickets away oh my gosh we had people listening from all over the country which is crazy i honestly i don't know i mean i think it's more my parents their friends my aunts my uncles they love radio i mean because that's what they grew up listening to and so did my friends but then when high school is when people started listening to Spotify and Apple music. So, I mean, that was what, like six years ago is when all that became popular. And in high school, you get your license and you start driving and what are you listening to? Are you listening to the radio? Are you listening to Spotify? Yeah. Are you talking about Spotify through the car? Are you talking about Spotify through the phone? Uh, Through the phone. Like if I were to listen, I have like a Spotify playlist. Um, I'll just plug in my phone and it's, I have like, I have Spotify pre- premium. Okay. So I can just play whatever music. Like I prefer listening to the radio, but I work in yeah. radio. 
So yeah, because think- of people, I mean, I'm just wondering if people are, if people want to hear people with the songs and, and connect with the personalities or they don't even know that exists. You know, I think if you find, you know, if it's, if you find that connection with a personality where you can relate to their stories or their personal stories, what they're going through, people are more prone to listening to you. The more authentic you are, uh, you know, if they happen to tune in for five minutes and you're talking about a personal story and they're like, oh my gosh, the same thing happened to me. Like, and then, you know, you do a weekly update or a daily update, they're more prone to listening. But if you're just, you know, doing the basic, like trending, what's going on and not really being authentic and opening up, that's where I think the disconnection uh, starts. Well, how did you go from behind the scenes to on the air? So I, I was at uh, Odyssey from June of 2019 to March of 2020, and then COVID happened. And then everyone, a lot of people in promotions were laid off. And then uh, I was finishing my senior year of college. So I went to Elmhurst University and I was trying to find a job. So I worked at the Illinois Media School for a little bit over a year. And then- What were you doing there? What was that? What were you doing there? I was an education admin assistant. So I was in charge of the students' grades, making sure they're attending classes. It was it was a full-time job and it was, I could connect with people that had the same passion as me. I wasn't doing radio, but- you know, it was, it was a great experience, but, uh, 95 will rock, which is out in Gurney. They were hiring for a new morning show co-host back in May of, was that May of 20? No, May of 20, May, 2020, no, 2021. I'm like trying to think of all the years (laughs) they all blend together. Yeah. And I reached out, I had a lot of great people in the industry that put in a good word for me. I ended up doing nine auditions. I I didn't get the gig, which uh, is totally okay. Like it was a really great experience. I love the people there. They were super supportive and they were like, no matter what, you're going to get your foot in the door here at Alpha Media. Like we're going to help you. Uh, A few weeks later, I got an email from our general manager saying that 1023 XLC, the sister station right across the hall is hiring for their afternoon, afternoon show. And I was like, oh my gosh, yes, I'm totally interested. Like whatever you need me to do, I'll send my resume. I went in, I did a few auditions and then I did about like six auditions and then I was hired. So I think it was with the help of all the great people that are in this industry that have had my back and put in a good word for me. uh, That's how I was able to get it. I mean, doing afternoons. I, I, at that point I was 23. 20, yeah, I was 23 when I got my first on-air gig doing afternoons. And then I uh, picked up mornings in May, just this past May. So I do afternoons and mornings. Nice. Now, how did, what is an audition? Like, I mean, what is, was each audition different? Or can you just describe what it is? So it's a full-on show. Like you're doing a, a full-on show when I auditioned with uh, Will Rock, 95 Will Rock. I would do the news stories. I would have the content. Uh, like help with the content. What else? Um, basically show prepping. You're doing the show full on live. So from five to 10, I was there. And then uh, same thing with XLC. And then, so you said like six or nine times. So are you doing six or nine different shows? Yeah. So I did, well, they're all the same, uh, but I just, I went different days because there was, uh, there were a lot of people auditioning. Uh, but I ended up, I, I can't remember. It was like eight or eight or nine auditions I did. And do they give you a breakdown or do you, is it spontaneous? Uh, so they're the, they have their segments uh, that, you know, after one day of doing, you kind of catch on to. So they would tell me what to prep, what to have. And I would come in and, and deliver it and hope I did well. <laughs> nice. And so how did you prep for that kind of stuff? Um, I, at that wow. point, I didn't, you know, there's the whole prep services, which I use, but I, I try and create my own content because so many stations are all using the same prep site. So I, I want to be a little bit more authentic, but 
basically you, you surf the web. So 95 will rock, they have like a happy hour. And so it was, you know, something funny and, you know, look up the most recent happy hours or funny stories or something that happened to you personally and something, you know, that you think the listeners would engage with because every, every station, every format has a different audience. So you have to adjust to the audience. So is that how you prep for the auditions? Yeah. Yeah. That's basically, they give you what you need, what the segments are and, and you create the content, you surf the web. Okay. Yeah. Because well, I'm back in the day, I mean, I've never worked in music radio, but people told me that they would get these things by mail, you know, prep services and jokes and everything because oh there was goodness. no internet. So yes, that's <laughs> what I heard. People used to like cut out stories from the newspaper. That's what people have told me. Yeah. So yeah, cause I'm thinking, you know, gosh, it must make your job easier, but you have to really go deep to be different, you know, to get your content. Yeah. Now, when, when, so when, when you do these bits or not bits, but you know, when you do these segments, how long is a segment? Uh, they can last. Usually if it's a long segment, like three minutes, you don't want to do anything like too long. It, usually like three to four minutes it, right now, my morning show, Eddie and I, we do a segment called Gen Edge and it's us competing, asking each other questions about our generation. Like I'm Gen Z. And so Eddie and I, they're, you know, we're from different generations. So we ask each other different questions and usually, you know, probably like four minutes tops, but we don't want to go like too long because people only have a certain amount of attention span. Yeah. He's a total pro. How did you get with him? What's he like? I met him oh, on the street one time and I asked him to do a podcast, but I never got it in touch with him. He is the best. Wow. He's fantastic. One of my best friends. Wow. Nice. Yeah. A fantastic mentor. Um, we, so Eddie and I connected before I got the job at XLC on Facebook. And then he messaged me. He's like, oh my gosh, like your content's great, the social media. And so we were just like going back and forth. And at that point I was looking for a second job uh, because I was only doing afternoons. And I, I wanted to make some more money. And uh, he's like, well, we are going to have a morning show opening. And they opened it. It was, you know, on the Alpha Media website. And I applied. And then I did two auditions, two or three auditions. And, and they offered it to me because they want to make sure you have chemistry with the person. Yeah. How did you first meet him? How did I meet him? Uh, yeah. We just connected on Facebook. Nice. Yeah. And, gosh, he is really a pro. And I mean, what's, what kind of things has, what kind of advice has he given you? He, the, the greatest thing about Eddie is he doesn't want you to change. Like, you know, he, he want he's like, you do you, you be you like, you know, he, he wants the show to be authentic and relatable to our audience and we we just have so much fun we really do there's never a mo we are so loud <laughs> we sometimes have to close our door because we laugh we're so loud but I mean we we have so much fun in the morning and you know there's things that I'm learning because I, I I just started on air in September of 2021 so it's only been a little over a year and you know I'll ask him questions or he'll give me guidance like hey let's do this but he's, he, he's really the best. And it's, I'm very grateful, like, and I hope everyone in radio knows how grateful I am because it's a huge opportunity. And I know that so it takes, you know, I'm blessed and I'm fortunate because I know it can take a very long time uh, to get to be on air. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that's what Brian Peck was saying about you, because I met other people who don't have a lot of experience and they're on the air. And they're not like you. They're sort of, some of them are sort of entitled. They, I don't know. It's it's not the same kind of attitude. And Brian kept saying, she's really incredible. She's so grateful. Aww. And I thought, wow, that's different. Love she's you, not Brian. like spoiled in the title or whatever. <laughs> no, but, um, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, because they, they get a little thing and then they think they should be superstars or something. And I'm thinking, wow, oh, yeah. a lot of people pay their dues. So I know. Oh, I know. And that's why I, I do whatever I can 
to if I need to board up or what you know on the weekends I I will do it because you know I like I said I many people had to do 10 years of board up and and I and I get that I totally understand you know I I'm just I'm very grateful and I would never take what I have for granted because it, like I said it, it I mean I could have been in my 30s like still board hopping and yeah. waiting for that first on air gig so I'm I'm very fortunate but the entertainment business is such that there are some people who you know people see their potential right now sorry not their potential they see their they see their qualities and they just hit it immediately they go they get what they want immediately because somebody's recognized their talent. So there are different paths to it. Absolutely. Um, now, so does Eddie set the tone of the show or how do you, how do you prep for that show? So we do our prep at night. I, you know, I'll do my brain, my brainstorm, my stories, creating content. And Eddie does, he's got stories. He does like the sports. He has the sports written out. Um, we have total traffic. They do our traffic for us. I do my traffic in my afternoon show, but you know, we prep at night, we get there in the morning and, and we just go, you know, the, the best thing is just, just to, to go. I mean, we do, we do do our prep. We, you know, I have my gen edge questions written every night. Uh, he has his senseless survey questions written, his gen edge questions, whatever's going on. We have that prep the night before, uh, I'll come up with stories the night before, but then also, the morning when you wake up, there's even more stories. So I'll get those as well. And then sometimes it's it what what happens in the moment, you know, if something happened, um, you know, like real life, my sister was getting married and, you know, there were changes her, you know, we had her bachelorette. And so what happened in the moment and we, we would talk about that, you know, so we do our prep, but then it's also real life. You know, we want to be relatable. And um, what time do you have to be at work? I get there at five, like five thirty ish. We go on at six. Um, but yeah, I leave around like four 30. Cause I, I live in, um, Mount prospect. The studio is in Joliet. Okay. Oh my gosh. Do you take the tollway? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's um, really, it's really not bad. It's, it's so, it's not bad at all. It really, how many miles is that? Like uh, 60 or something? Yeah. It's, it's not bad. It, it's really worth it. And there's no one on the road. So what about coming home or is there anybody on the road? Well, it depends because, uh, some days I will, do you know, oh, Scott Childers says hi, by the way. Oh, hi, Scott. I know he interviewed, I interviewed him for my podcast a long time ago and I went down to yeah. Joliet. Oh, is he, he your PD? He is, he's our chief engineer. Cool. So yeah, he's fantastic. So he actually built a studio in Joliet. Um, and that's where sometimes I, I record my afternoon show because I go to Gurney about twice a week because my afternoon show is in Gurney, mm -hmm. which is way north of there. It's about an hour 15. So Gurney from where I live is about 25 minutes, but from Joliet to Gurney, it's about an oh, hour yeah. 15. You can, so, you can go to, you know, Milwaukee. I mean, it's it's like going from yeah. Chicago to Milwaukee or something. Yeah. yeah. So Scott built a studio and that's where I, I mainly do my afternoon show. Um, so if I do my afternoon show, sometimes I can voice track that and I can get home by one. Uh, I do a little bit of help with XLC promotions, like scheduling posts and then I do have a upstairs, my room, I have like a mini studio where I can do my traffic breaks from. But now if somebody wants to build a studio, what do you suggest? The Roadcaster Pro. Okay. I what love is that? my, it's like a board. It's a board full on. You can have sound effects, uh, pot up, put pot down. It's, it's really nice. I've had that. I got that is like a graduation gift because I had a, a podcast, which I want to pick that back up in, in the new year, uh, Monday motivation with Hannah B, but that's where it all started is my senior year was cut short with COVID. So my parents, um, my big graduation gift was the roadcaster and we built a nice little studio in there, um, which I'm very grateful for because that's before I was literally recording my podcast, talking into my phone. Yeah. I was a senior in college. I wasn't making much money. 
Yeah. Well, actually I teach that I teach uh smartphone audio and I teach also podcasting. And I say, mm-hmm. if you don't have a mic, use your phone, but I tell them how to do it pretty well. So, you know, how to, yeah. how to do it correctly, but what kind of mic do you have? I have the road pod mic road pod. Okay. Yeah. And then what is, what's your studio? Like, how did you prepare your studio? So there's, it's not, I need to add, um, I need, I, sometimes I have to record with like a blanket over. So it doesn't sound so, you know what I mean? Yes. I mean, it's yeah, got to the dampen desk. the sound, right? Yeah. I mean, I just got the basic desk. My dad actually drilled a hole into the desk. So I have an arm for my mic, um, the board, and then I even have a live on air sign. Uh, but I, I need more of a, like an enclosed area. Right. So. Yeah. We tell people to go into their closet if they want to really dampen it or you yeah. know, make it tighter. So when you, you know, you said you mentioned your sister. Now, when you're on the air, how do you know if it's okay to talk about your family and so forth? Oh, I just, I'm very authentic. And I, I have a, they don't mind. Close, I have a very close family. Yeah. No, my, my sister, everything I say about them is great. I, I, I come from a very supportive, um, a fantastic family and everyone that knows me knows that I, my, my parents are like my biggest fans. Mm. So they're, they're totally, you know, we talked about my sister's wedding and, um, you know, things that go on in our life or the, the Christmas decorations and what we're doing is together as a family on the weekends. Uh, so we're very close. So it's positive. I mean, it, they don't, you don't go, you don't talk about struggles or whatever. No, I mean, if there is, you know, anything like my sister's uh, husband, she got married in September. He had to go through two best mans. Like he had one best man, something happened, another best man. And so, you know, I talked about that and people are like, oh my gosh, did the, what happened? So when I come up, when I go to these events, they're like, what ended up happening? Did he get that best? Man? Like what happened? You know, so people get invested in your personal stories. And so, so they don't mind. Your family doesn't mind. No, no. And uh, no, back to Eddie. Did, does he ever tell you about how radio used to be? He used to be um, majorly huge on B96. Yes. Does he ever talk to you about what it used to be like? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys had to use um, carts. Yeah, I didn't use it, but yeah, I, I'm not because yeah. I got into radio later. But yeah, the, uh, the physical carts. Yeah. 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 It was way different, way different. Just, that's what I heard. <laughs> but did he also talk about, um, did he also describe what the business was like and so forth? Uh, yeah. Like I, f- I feel like it's way different now because it's all now radio is becoming more digital. And back then there was barely any social media, right. which is so crazy to think about it's like how did you promote what you're giving away or how did you promote your show well, yeah that's so crazy to me because the show was promoted through other shows and it was also promoted through tv and also through billboards there was no internet so it was promoted through um newspapers and so forth that's crazy <laughs> but i think that's so cool like honestly i wish we still social media is awesome. I, I love it. I love TikToking and Instagramming, but I feel like if we were still back in the eighties or the nineties, a lot more people would obviously be listening to radio because that's all there was at that time. There wasn't streaming platforms. Right. But I mean, the concept of media though has changed so much throughout the years because radio used to be the only one, you know, the mm-hmm. only outlet and then there were, and then before that was newspapers and so forth. So, I mean, digital, it's really about content because it's different platforms. Plus it's broadcasting. Mm-hmm. Right. But do you feel, is it hard to keep up with all the outlets, you know, to create your content and so forth? On in TikTok and Instagram? Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love I wish it. Which you like better, TikTok or Instagram? I like Instagram. I, I do love TikTok. I do love TikTok, but... Instagram is where I have my, my following. That's I've, I've had that account since I was in sixth grade. Obviously it's different now. It's, it's Hannah B on air, but I, I've, I've grown up with that Instagram since sixth grade now. I, and I love TikTok. 
absolutely love it. Eddie and I are on there TikToking together. Nice. <laughs> I have him doing dances and stuff. But my my favorite one that where my following is is Instagram. And I think that's important because a lot of the people that are following me are people my age. So when I post in my Instagram story and I'm like, here's the link, tap here to listen. All they have to do is click the link and they can listen to our show. Wait, so you're able to post a link in your stories? Yeah. So if you go to Instagram and you go to your, you want to post something in your story, like you go to, it's a little square with a smiley face and you click on that. You have the option to add music, take a poll or like a few other things or add a link. All you do is click link and then you copy the link and then you add like a text, like click here to listen, done right in the story, click next, add to story. And then people literally just have to click on the link when they, okay, like, for, because for a while you couldn't do that. Yeah. And now it's a, it's a thing. Okay. And yeah. For a while that. it has to be like link in, link in bio or whatever. Yeah. So I, I, I wish that I could add an actual link to my actual Instagram posts. Yeah. That would be beneficial, but Instagram story does it as well. But see, I think some people can do it through their posts, but you have to have a certain amount of a uh, certain amount of followers and yeah, it's I like think some you special be, account. You have to be mega verified with the yeah. blue check mark. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've I've been to those and they just say, Oh, just click here. I'm like, okay. So so what is it like to be in broadcasting and be on social media? Like uh, do you feel you have to be different in each one? Oh or- no. No. However I am on air is how I am in person and how I am on social media. Um, I, I want to be, you know, genuine. I want to be who I am. I'm not going to portray myself as someone I'm not on the air, someone I'm not on social media. Whatever you see is, is what you're going to get on all platforms, whether it's on the airwaves, off the airwaves, at an event, on Instagram, that's me. And then what do you think, why do you think people are not authentic like that? Because social media is, it's got that stigma where everyone has to portray that, you know, everything's perfect. Everything has to be perfect. And that's, that's our society is when people are on social media, they, they want everyone to see the the perfectness, right? But the more you're authentic and relatable and, you know, like I was openly, my mom, she was diagnosed with breast, breast cancer when I was three years old. And one of my endorsements is an ice cream place. And we, I pitched this idea I'm like, it's breast cancer awareness month. Why don't we go, you know, pink for breast cancer awareness month, Susie swirl. Uh, I got in a banana costume. It was let's go bananas for breast cancer awareness. They had a Hannah banana, strawberry banana flavor. And that was all over social media. I'm like, I'm doing this. My mom was, you know, a survivor. She suffered, she conquered, she made it through. And I want to help those that are affected. So what, what were people's reactions? It, people it's share their inspiring story. to people. It's, it's inspiring, especially, you know, if they, uh, hopefully I inspire people to share their stories and so they don't feel alone. And, and that's the goal, right? Especially if you're on air and someone's listening and they're like, I know someone going through cancer and it, it's very difficult, especially I was, I mean, I was just three years old. Uh, so I hope it was inspiring. I hope it encourage other people to, you know, go out there in the community and help make a difference. And then what else are you endorsing? I noticed you have different things going on. So I, uh, Susie Swirl, I had, uh, some of them are only like, uh, you know, the few months. Mm-hmm. So I did Raising Cane's a grand opening, uh, Kia, Hawkins and Kia, uh, J. Joho Boutique, um, the Auditorium Ballroom, which is a wedding venue. I had a doctor and uh, salon bliss. Hmm. Okay. And also when you, um, when you're on the air, okay. So it's your voice. And then when you're on social media and do you do videos? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So where are your videos? What are some of them? Where are they? Where are they? Where are my videos? 
Uh, mainly Instagram and TikTok. Okay. I and Facebook. I usually post them on all platforms. Okay. Some and then how long? Are, yeah, go ahead. Some of them are goofy videos, me teaching Eddie a dance, a TikTok <laughs> dance. Some are fun videos where we were giving away Ed Sheeran tickets and Eddie had a reddish orange wig on. Hmm. And we, it's just, I love creating this stuff in my, I can create this stuff in my sleep and I wake up and I'm like, we're doing this. <laughs> Some are just, hey, um, so actually I have a few from the boutique where I do like a little fashion show of all different things that they, women can buy at the boutique, all different kinds of things. A lot of them are promotions, promoting the station, promoting our shows. And some of, some of them are for my endorsements as well. And then what's your podcast? You said you're not doing it right now. Monday motivation with Hannah B, which I, my goal is to start in the beginning of the new year. I just been, I've been so busy that I want to be consistent with it where I don't want to do one and then wait another two months. I want to do it every week. Like that's what I used to do. Um, but Monday motivation with Hannah B goes back to when I was in college and that's what my show was. And it's just all about spreading positivity. Uh, talk a little bit about mental health. Um, you know, something good that's going on that day, something, you know, it's, it's just, it's supposed to be uplifting. Uh, and so I started that when I graduated college, started the podcast, transitioned it and, I would bring on a guest and maybe something that happened in their life that was powerful and would make a difference in someone else's life. I would talk about their story if they were comfortable with it, or um, I had a lot of radio personalities on and it was kind of like Hannah B chasing the dream and they would give me advice. What can I do? And so I stopped that it's been, it's been a while now and I've been wanting to go back to doing it. It's just on a, at weekends I have events. So, and I, and I want it to be good. You know, I don't want to just do it to do it and it doesn't sound right. Or, you know, you got to have that, that work-life balance. And I want to make sure, you know, I'm, I'm refreshed and ready Monday mornings for my morning show. So uh, when events start to slow down, I definitely want to pick that back up. What kind of events do you have? Uh, different live broadcasts. So uh, Hawkins and Kia, I had a live broadcast there. Uh, I used to do in the summer, we were at Blarney Island in Antioch Friday nights for a live broadcast. I've done the room place, wherever, wherever they need me. I'm there. <laughs> and um, when you, when the people were, well, first of all, who did you interview? Who's in radio? for your podcast? Oh, there were, I I've had a, a lot of people from, uh, B96 jams, us 99. Um, some people from like across the U S I, I love, I go to like morning show boot camp. I I'm like a nerd for all that stuff. I love that stuff. Uh, so I, I I've interviewed people I did camp broadcast. If uh, Sam Alex, he has like a, a syndicated show. He runs camp broadcast. Uh, so I interviewed him. Uh, some of my friends that were teachers when it was like back to school season. Just a lot of different, yeah, <laughs> people. Nice. And uh, what's some advice that people gave you that you can remember? Uh, there were so many different. I actually have a whole notebook. Uh, you know, don't fear failure, go after it and, and don't, and don't stop, take a chance. You might have to go out of your comfort zone. Just, just be you and be authentic. Don't change who you are. Just be you, be your positive, upbeat self. And, and don't be afraid to put yourself out there, take chances and, and, and network. Networking is huge. And that's something I would tell my students when I worked at the media school. And I still tell them, it, it, it's, it's huge. It, it's, if you know someone that knows someone that knows someone and, and you have a good reputation, you're, you're good. You know, you don't want to burn bridges. You don't want to burn bridges, especially in this industry, because it's so big, but yet it's so small that everyone knows everyone. That's true. And when you said, you know, you said in your podcast, you were talking about being positive. What are some, what's some pieces, what, what's some advice you have for people to be positive? 
I, there were a few different episodes where, you know, if you're having a rough day, what I would tell people is, you know, the minute you wake up, think of three things that you're grateful for, or uh, the minute you're saying, oh gosh, I'm so bad at this. Like, gosh, you know, you have to say three positive things about yourself to make up for that one negative comment that you made or spreading kindness. The more you spread kindness to other people, the better you feel about yourself, right? Like if, if you do something and you make someone's day a random act of kindness, like that puts you in a good mood because you see someone else smiling and making their day. Why put someone else down when it's just going to put you in a crummy mood? You're not becoming a better person by making someone else feel bad. And so that's, I've always just been a very positive, like spread kindness, treat others the way you want to be treated. And that that's the message I wanted to get across, especially during COVID when it was such a, a negative and it just, it wasn't a good time for anyone. People were losing their jobs. I was in college. I was really bummed. I couldn't enjoy my senior year. Um, hard, I was yeah. a college athlete and I, I, I didn't play softball my senior year when I wanted to focus on radio, but there wasn't even a season. So, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's important to have that outlet where people can feel, I want to listen to this. It puts me in a good mood. Have you um, learned anything but from be, by being, from being an athlete that you've applied to the rest of your life? Oh, yes. <laughs> like what? Yes. Well, I broke my thumb in the alumni game, so thumbs up for that. Oh, gosh. That was about a, a two months ago, but definitely, I mean, it's the same thing. It, don't feel, never let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the game. Don't, you know, you can't, it's okay to fail. That's how you make your mistakes, right? I've made plenty of errors on the field. Did I beat myself up? Yeah, I'm like, if I wouldn't have made that error, we probably would have made the game. But okay, it was a team effort, right? And now that I look back and think about it, I'm now in my 20s and I think about how much I used to like beat myself up if we lost a game. It, it didn't affect me in the long run, right? But, you know, team effort. I was on a team with, tw- it was 24 girls in college. Uh, and that's, it plays a huge role in, you know, working hard, determination, dedication, being an athlete was almost like having another job. I was a full-time student, an athlete, and I worked. I was a waitress. So it's it was a lot, but I chose it because I was very passionate and softball will always hold a special place in my heart. How do you, how do you train? I have a lot of respect for athletes. How do you condition? So we had morning workouts, yeah, lifting, conditioning, um, sprinting. We did a lot of running, a lot of lifting, uh, a lot of practices, a lot of practices and, and games. You know, our season is in the spring, but it's, it's basically repetition, right? I mean, there were times where we had practices until midnight and I had 8 a.m. classes and I commuted to Elmhurst. I didn't live on campus, um, but I still have that. I love working out. When I graduated, I did kickboxing and for a few years and now I do CrossFit. So it's, it's still a part of me. I just, I like that intense, you know, like let's go. <laughs> but that, that could also be why you're positive because there's so many endorphins going. It just can make you just always up. Yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> but how long did you do, when did you start doing sports? I started playing softball when I was seven. So I played you're from already, when I was... So you're already used to being fit because I, you were working out so many years. Yeah. I, I mean, I, when I was really little, you know, I did basketball, softball, soccer. I did competition cheer. I did a little bit of everything. My parents put me in dance, you know, to figure out what I wanted. And then in middle school, I was like, I want to do softball all the time. So my dad and I went to the batting cages almost every single day because I wanted to make a full-time travel team. And I was determined to do it. So one year I literally spent the entire year uh, practicing, bunting, slapping, hitting, pitching, throwing. And then the following year, I, I made a full-time travel team. And did you say you wanted to do sports radio or not? I forgot. I'm not too familiar. Like, I'll watch sports, 
but I, I mainly watch the NPF, which is the national pro fast pitch. My dad's a Sox fan. I'll watch the Cubs, the Sox, the Bears, the Hawks, but I don't know, like I would not be able to do, I would not be able to do sports radio. I don't know that much about it. Whereas music is second nature to me. Yeah. Now, so when, okay, so you're doing radio now, it sounds like you're really busy and sounds like you're really enjoying it and tell Eddie, ask Eddie, I can please interview him because I did contact him years ago and I met him on the street and I don't know what happened, but yes, I will definitely tell him because he's a legend basically, but he's the best. um, Yeah. I think he was with his wife and his baby or something, but the thing is that, uh, yeah, cute. Um, but you know, you're doing all this stuff now and do you have a vision for what you want to do in the future? you know it's so funny because so many people ask me that I the the thing is is I I'm doing what I I wanted to do like this is exactly what I wanted to do and I I I love being on air and I I really can't picture myself doing anything else so I I want to do on air for as long as I can wherever it is it's I, I I love it and it's it's a huge part of me it's I can be myself and I, it's funny because when I they, they interviewed me for the alumni or the prospect magazine at Elmhurst they asked me the same question and I tossed around the idea I'm like maybe a program director we'll, we'll see I I don't know I don't know I'll see I'll see what the future brings, but right now I, I know that I always, I really want to always do on air. It's, it's like my happy place. And then, um, do you have any advice for people who want to be in radio? Yeah, absolutely. Networking is huge. It is huge. What I did is when I was starting to network or when I would bring people on my podcast, networking, branding, and I mean, going out of your comfort zone and, and don't be afraid to fail. Branding, I when I was doing Monday Motivation with Hannah B, I had merchandise. I had, uh, it was hashtag nothing but positive vibes, which I still use. Uh, I had wristbands. I had chapsticks that had Hannah B on air, nothing but positive vibes with my logo. And I ended up partnering with a family who the the younger daughter has a rare disease called neurofibromatosis. And then a portion of the proceeds of the merchandise went to the tumor, the children's tumor foundation. So, you know, spreading the positive vibes. And we did a fundraiser at a local restaurant where 10% of everyone's meal went. So branding is huge because it portrays who you are. Networking is another huge key, whether it's reaching out, sending those emails, asking a program director or an on-air talent, hey, can I can I give you a phone call? Like I I'm I'm someone that's interested in the industry. I would love to pick your brain. I've done that a handful of times. Uh schedule a Zoom via blah 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 for a coffee and you know sell the person five bucks and coffee's on you or something. There's there's many different things that I did. Uh handwritten thank yous every time I would interview someone or someone would give me the time where I could ask them questions. I would handwritten, write them a thank you, put Hannah B merchandise on there because I, I'm very old school. <laughs> I'm, I know I'm 24, but I, I'm very like handwritten thank yous. Like that's just the way I am. Uh, but networking was what really helped me attending those conferences and not being afraid to put myself out there. And how does somebody figure out their brand? Because you said, when you say branding, do you mean marketing or do you mean? Yeah. So marketing yourself, like you got your, your radio girl shirt on, right? it's it's branding, you're branding your, your brand. (laughs) So it's basically marketing. And that's why I just got Eddie V and I stickers to hand out at remotes that show our showtime and our logo. And I got Hannah B on air ones. And I think that, you know, people carry that sticker or that wristband and they'll see your social media handle and they'll follow you. And then they follow you and they see what you're up to. It could be a random person. There were so many times where I was wearing my nothing but positive vibe shirt at the mall. 
And this woman's like, oh, what is that for? And I told her, and then I had the QR code on my phone. I'm like, all you have to do is scan this QR code and it'll bring you to my podcast. Nice. And then um, how do people figure out, let's say they don't, they're not sure what they want to do. You, you figured out your, um, your name and the idea for your podcast, but how does somebody arrive at that? What they want to do? So I think it's, I did a branding workshop when I worked at the media school you have to find something that you're passionate about. If you're passionate about sports, base your brand on sports. If you're passionate about cooking, base your brand on cooking. If you're passionate about fashion, do it on fashion. And that's where you kind of have to get those creative, like you got to get that creative brain going. What is a creative name I can do? If I'm Hannah and I like fashion, what, what can I do with that, right? Or if I'm Hannah and I like being positive, you know, I, it just, it happened that my radio show was on a Monday and I'm like, I'm going to do Monday motivation with Hannah B. And then it just, I was like sending you nothing but positive vibes. And then I just was like, hashtag nothing but positive vibes. I'm going to do that. Nice. And it, you, you have to really find something that you love to do. You love to talk about and fits you and fits your personality. Obviously, I'm not going to be Hannah B talking about like, I I don't know, like current events, like, like, yeah, sad, that's like not, war and so forth. Yeah, that's not me. Right. And um, also another thing is um, when, you know, there are people who have these facades and they act a certain way because they feel they have to present. So either they present themselves as really they present themselves as somebody else because they don't either they don't know who they are or they're afraid to show their authentic self. So let's say somebody's like that. What kind of advice do you have for people to not be afraid to show their authentic self? I starting in the industry, that is another piece of advice people told me was be you, be authentic, because people will see right through you. Yeah. Especially if you're on the air and then you're out in an event and you're completely different. People aren't going to want to listen to that. That's true. They, you know, there's some people who are so bubbly and so forth. And, you know, even on TV and then you meet them and they're not like that. It's like, yikes, is that a facade or what's up with that? Right. And I, I could never be like that. And that's, I was just at, Kia, at Hawkins and Kia and the listeners were like, oh my gosh, like you're totally how you are on air. It, it, and I'm like, yeah, I would hope. <laughs> I'm not going to change. I'm not going to change who I am for you. Yeah, that, that, that's just not fair to the listener. And that's not fair to myself. That wouldn't be fair to Eddie. I'm me. And you don't, you should not have to change who you are to fit a format, to fit a station. Or even if that's on socials, like you just be you. Now, is there something, is, is there anything that um, you really don't like about social media? You know, um, do you think it exposes people? Or what do you think about it? I know you like it, but are there some drawbacks about it? I think in our society nowadays, it's, it's way, it's, it's different. It's becoming, especially people are getting it at such a young age where, I, I mean, I grew up, I, I never had issues with it, but in middle school, that's a huge thing where it's like cyberbullying now. And I, when I have kids, I'm like, I don't want my kids to deal with that whole cyberbullying thing. But I mean, at this age, you don't deal with that. I never had to deal with it once, but people also share pictures, like everything's so great. la di da It's like, like I said, just be you, <laughs> just be you. Now, what about people in real life? So you're talking about radio, then you're talking about social media. What about people who are just afraid, like they go to some gathering, they're just afraid to be authentic with other people? What would I, what advice would I give them? Yeah. Because some people are, they're afraid to be vulnerable or to Mm -hmm. not seem cool. So they act a certain way. Hmm. You got me thinking on that one. (laughs) I think. Growing up, I mean, in middle school, that's where everyone's like, oh my gosh, I'm changing. I have braces. Like, and I'd go out to family events and I was super quiet. I was, I was a very quiet girl. I was very quiet up until I was in high school. Was that just your personality? What was that? Was that just your personality? Yeah, I was, I was, 
it wasn't like extremely quiet, but I wasn't that person in class that was like, oh, me, 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 me. That wasn't me. And then I got in high school and I, I taught, I was a chatty Kathy. I talked a lot and, you know, I just came out of my shell. I, I one day I just, I'm like, I want to be, I want to surround myself with people that want to be around me. Like, I don't want to feel uncomfortable. If I feel uncomfortable around someone else, then I, like, I shouldn't, then why am I associating myself with them? If that makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you should associate yourself with people that make you feel good, that make you feel positive and good about yourself. And if you're second guessing what other people are thinking about you, then that that's not healthy. But do you, um, do you experience, because you're successful, do you experience envy from other people? I hope not. <laughs> okay. So you probably don't, I mean, you don't experience it. I mean, no. if you experience it, you would know, but that's good. So people are supportive. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I have a very, a great supportive family, friends, coworkers. That's good. So anything else you'd like to say? Because, uh, I didn't realize that you interviewed so many radio people before. Well, I got it. When I, when I get my podcast going, I got to have you on. Okay. We'll talk about, I'll think about something we can talk about. Honestly, I just, like I or said, how long, I, I, or how long did you have your podcast for? Probably about, so 2020 till about, it was about a year. Okay. Did you do it every week? I did. It was every weekend I would record it or after I got off of my job at the Illinois media school, I would come home at like eight o'clock at night, record an episode. And I would prep like that night before, or I would do the weekends. Okay. And then um, how long was a typical episode? It wasn't long. Mine was probably between like 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. So that, that's pretty long because sometimes people just do a few minutes, but especially if it's an inspirational kind of thing. Oh, the first few I had, those were about five to eight minutes because yeah. I was recording on my phone. I had, I didn't have Adobe audition and that's when I was starting out. So I just, I sounded, you know, and I'm still learning. I'm still learning my, how to fix my, de- you know, my delivery or, you know, you don't want to sound too announcerish. And in the beginning stages, I go back and I listen and it, it makes me happy now because I think about how much I've grown in about a year. But the first few episodes, those were real short ones. Sorry, I interrupted you before. So is there anything else you'd like to share? If there's anything you get out of this episode, it's just it's really be you and, you know, don't take anything for granted and, and don't be afraid to to go after what you want. If you're not happy what you're doing now, make that change now bef- before the new year and start that new year doing something you love. All right. Thanks. Let me uh, stop this. I'm going to stop the uh, recording and I'm going to stop. T- Whoa. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to stop the stream. And yeah, thanks for um, doing this. And let oh me my God, stop. Of course. But just let me stop this for a second because we're still streaming. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Sorry. (laughs) No, you're good. So, okay. Ooh, that's weird.